Welcome to Buffalo Rumblings Live. My name is Matt Warren. Uh, I'm joined today by John Ramsey, a.k.a. Yards Per Pass, both on Twitter and uh, his username over at buffalorumblings.com. Say hi, John. What's up, guys? So you've looked at the game tape. E.J. Manuel's been the, the hot topic really since the game ended. He did not have a great game. Uh, didn't look in sync with his receivers. Uh Took took sacks, took a safety uh, for an intentional grounding in the end zone late in the game. What? Why was EJ Manuel so bad on Sunday? I mean, I have never been, you know, EJ's number one supporter. I, I will be a hundred percent honest with that. But you can't blame EJ for for this game. The the whole team went out and laid an egg. I mean, the offensive line just got beat up on both sides of the ball. I mean, uh, you know, running and pass blocking. Uh, EJ, he listen. He did miss a couple throws. Let's be honest, but they were down by a lot by the time he missed those throws. It's not like you know they were. It was in the first half when he missed these throws. He missed he missed his two big ones in the second half when they were already down by ten. Uh, EJ, he like you said, he didn't have a great game, but he's not the reason the Bills lost the game. It was a total team effort on that one. There were several instances where. Uh, we saw the ball land at receiver's feet. We saw the ball behind receivers. Brian posted a picture on our website today from the All-22 where the ball is incredibly behind Robert Woods in what would have been uh, a, a pretty, I, I'll say, a pretty easy pitch and catch score, you know, when it's like 40 yards down the field, how easy you know pitch and catch that is. But uh, Woods is running free in the, in the defensive secondary, but it's well behind him. Is there a reason, is there something that you see when you watch him play that he's missing all of these throws? Or is it just that he's not a very accurate quarterback? Yeah, I mean, I think on that Woods throw, that, that was actually the same play I hinted to in, in my piece last week where I thought they had a deep ball. Uh, they, they've run that play every single week. They, they've yet to hit on it, and they've had receivers running open every single week on that play. So it's a little bit disheartening that they, that they haven't done it. I mean, that just looked like a timing thing. I mean, it looked like Woods had, you know, Woods didn't even turn his head around and EJ had thrown it behind him. Uh, so that, I mean, that wasn't good. There was the, the fourth down play when they, they ran their, you know, they ran their little shell across, but it was zoned, so they, they sat up. And, you know, uh, Williams is running across the middle, and it's, you know, it's behind Mike Williams. It's, you, you get a little pressure on him. You get those happy feet, and his mechanics kind of, Go go for crap a little bit. I mean, I mean, he kind of reminds you of Fitzpatrick in that regard, in that you know, he he, he kind of just falls apart when there's stuff in his face and he can't you know have a clean pocket and follow through. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the timing issue because it looked an awful lot like EJ Manuel would throw it with anticipation, something that people have been kind of really begging for him to do, and he's been doing well through the first uh, couple weeks this year, and then the receivers either weren't looking or they looked late. And uh, late in the game, there was on that fourth down that they failed to convert. Um, it was the Sammy Watkins crossing one way and the Mike Williams crossing the other way. And Mike Williams throws his hands up after the play's over, uh, probably because he was wide freaking open. But he wasn't doing it towards EJ. He was doing it towards Sammy. And par- at least part of me thought, well, maybe because Sa- in the replay, Sammy doesn't clearly doesn't turn his head till the ball's well past him. It part of me thinks that these receivers aren't turning their heads. And, and I, I'm not saying this to, you know, wash, wash my hands of E.J. Manuel saying, well, he made all the right throws and because you know, he obviously didn't. But it, what are you seeing that led you to believe that, either in the stands or um, in the, the game film? I mean, on that fourth down, uh, the Texans brought six. The Bills only had five in the block. So there was a free rusher that came up the middle. So hot route, yeah, exactly hot route. So I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you, you got to either stand in there and, and and take the hit sometimes, and he kind of threw off his back foot, and it just kind of went in between both guys, which you know obviously isn't a good thing on on fourth down. But I I've been in, impressed. He, I think he's been a lot better this year than he was last year. Last year I think he was really pretty bad. And, but you know he's he's been a lot better. He made some made some decent throws against the Bears. You know, fit it in some tight spots. That overtime throw to Williams, I mean, that was a mm-hmm. that was that was a really good throw. But is he 
has he been great? No, but this is also the first game he's had to try and win it, where the last two he could kind of rely on the defense and the special teams to win it for him. Why didn't Sammy Watkins get into... Um get into a groove this game. He was targeted a lot. I think his targets were eight or nine, somewhere in that range, but he only had two catches and they came late. Why wasn't he... Why wasn't EJ Manuel able to find him earlier? Uh, it, the Chargers did some pretty interesting things with their with their coverages. Uh, they, they did a lot of matchup stuff in, in their zones. They, they, they did some stuff where they would man Watkins and they would play zone on the rest of the field. I mean, they were definitely... Watching out for Sammy. I mean, that was you could tell he was their number one priority. And then they were getting a hell of a pass rush. I mean, everyone's seen the the one play where Freeney did his patented spin move, and Corey Glett. I mean, he's you know looks like he's about to fall over. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a, they were running a lot of defensive line stunts, and the Bills' offensive line looked like they'd never seen him before. I mean, I don't know if you, it's because you got Pierce, who's a tackle playing guard, and you got a new guard. I mean, I think, you know, there was a, Henderson's a rookie. There's a lot of inexperience in there, and it, and it kind of showed. So even when Watkins was getting open, that might have been the times when there was pressure. Even late, the, one of the late sacks that Manuel took, and I forget which drive it was, but I know it was on the right side of the TV screen, and it was in the fourth quarter because of that. Um, Fred Jacks, uh, one of the, it was another line stunt like you were talking about. The defensive tackle loops all the way around the left side of the Bills. Um, offensive line, and Fred Jackson just kind of gives him, I don't know, a half-hearted shoulder and then makes himself available to Manuel. But by the time he does that, Cordy Glenn's already been beat for, for a sack. And, um, I mean, I don't watch as much tape, um, the All-22 stuff, as you and Brian do, but it was clearly, to me, his worst game in a Buffalo Bills uniform, period. Not just, you know, well, since his rookie year. No, I think it was his worst game. He, he allowed several uh, quarterback pressures. Um, on the play that you referenced, it looked like he kind of got tangled up with C.J. Spiller a little bit, but all of that still comes into the equation, and I, I just, it was really hard for, to get kind of a feel for Manuel when he was running for his life several times throughout that game, whether it was Freeney or coming from somewhere else, and uh, he was able to do that one highlight reel play where he was able to get out and get it to Chandler for a game. Nobody seems to be talking about how that, play, that, that throw was... Um, wasn't the most accurate pass either. It was behind Chandler, and he almost dropped it, uh, but then ended up getting something like 47 yards or something off of it. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it, he was able to get out and create some, some plays, and that's the other thing I wanted to kind of touch on with Manuel before we move on to the running game, just for a touch real quick. He's getting crushed for, well, not getting crushed. You know, he's, he's sliding and doing things that the coaches are telling him to do. Don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Um, I, I can understand folks' frustration with, say, a third down going out before the sticks, but I mean, at some point you have to, you know, cut your losses and throw the ball away, or, or take, you know, take the sack, uh, take the slide if you're running with the ball. And and he's been doing that, and it's frustrating people because they think he's this big tough guy, but he's got to live with the injuries, right? What do you think about that? I, I think EJ's, uh, you know, hit the, the biggest thing against him is that, you know, he's not a great runner. And the problem is he's so athletic is that everyone thinks he should be a great runner. Mm. But but anyone that watches him, he's not natural, like, with, with the ball. I mean, you, you, you just look at the Jets and, you know, in Geno Smith. You know, G, Geno, the athlete, I mean, he's wasn't thought of as much of a runner as EJ, but, you know, if you've watched him at all this year, he, he can move pretty good without the ball. You know, I, EJ is more of a like a Roethlisberger type guy, and I think he he's just thought of as so athletic that he can run, but he's really, I mean, if you watch him play, I don't know how you can say he is a natural running, you know, we want the ball in his hands quarterback, you know, out on the edges. I think that's kind of unfair, and his athleticism just, you know, kind of makes people think that. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. He doesn't, it doesn't look like he loves to run when he has the ball in his hands. Speaking of the running game, was the running game problems just, I mean, as easy to, to, to simplify as the offensive line needs to do a better job? I mean, here's the thing with the running game. Uh, every week, the Bills see the extra guy down in the box. They, every week, they see this, the extra safety down, you know, whether it's eight in the box or, you know, seven in the box, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Teams know the Bills are going to run the football. 
And until the Bills start beating people through the air, you're going to keep seeing that extra guy. 